It's been hailed as one of the century's most important archaeological finds, the body of a Bronze Age mountaineer, which scientists believe could be 4,000 years old. New DNA discovery on Utsi the Iceman shocks researchers. He wasn't the same as us. They called it one of the most astonishing finds of the century, a body perfectly preserved, locked inside the ice of the Alps. Not a fossil, not a skeleton, a man, skin, clothes, and weapons still intact as if he'd only just fallen. More than 5,000 years ago, in the brutal cold of the Tyrolean mountains, he met his end. An arrow cut him down, and the ice kept his secret until 1991. When he emerged, it felt like time had folded. His shoes stuffed with grass for warmth, his leather cloak stitched with purpose, his copper axe gleaming in the snow, the oldest ever found, arthritis in his joints, parasites in his gut, the bitter trace of illness, and a wound in his back that never healed. He was given a name, Utsi, the Iceman. For decades, we believed his story was simple, that he was just another man of Europe's copper age, living and dying like the people around him, a face of his time. But DNA has a way of breaking what we think we know. And the deeper scientists looked, the stranger it became. Because Utsi didn't fit. He wasn't like the others at all. The truth wasn't about how he died. It was about who he was. A man whose bloodline didn't match his neighbors, his kin, or even his tribe. A fading lineage, already vanishing while he still walked the trails. So the real mystery isn't his death in the snow. It's his life. Why was he different? And what happened to the people who shared his blood? Before we open the ice on this haunting riddle, what do you think? Was he a lost traveler? An exile? Or the last survivor of a forgotten people? Drop your theory in the comments. And subscribe, because here on Savage Past, we go deeper than history dares. When Utsi first broke free of the ice in 1991, he was mistaken for a modern mountaineer. Rescuers thought he was just another hiker lost to the storm. Only later did the carbon dating strike like lightning. This wasn't a man of decades past. This was a man of the Copper Age, walking the high passes of the Alps more than 5,000 years ago. His body carried the scars of a harsh life. Arthritis swelling his joints. Frostbite carved into his flesh. Parasites chewing silently through his gut. And then came his final hours. An arrow embedded in his shoulder. A crushing blow to the head. And evidence that he may have fallen hard, collapsing in the ice where he froze. For years, archaeologists built a story from these fragments. A Copper Age farmer hunter. A man at home in these peaks living much like the others of his time. A man who simply died where history caught him. But here's the mistake. Everyone assumed he belonged, that he was typical of the people around him, that he was one of them. And that assumption may be the greatest error of all. The story began to unravel when scientists did something they hadn't done before. Instead of just studying Utsi in isolation, his stomach contents, his tools, his injuries, they widened the lens. They asked, who were the people living in these valleys at the same time? And how did he compare to them? Ancient DNA has become a scalpel sharper than any copper blade. And when researchers pulled sequences from dozens of Alpine burials, men, women, entire communities, they finally had a control group, a chance to see if Utsi was a reflection of his people or a stranger hiding in plain sight. At first, the results were reassuring. Utsi, like others of the Copper Age, carried a heavy ancestry from Anatolian farmers, the migrants who had brought agriculture into Europe 7,000 years earlier. The rest of his genome came from older hunter-gatherers, the remnants of Ice Age Europe. On the surface, he fit. But DNA isn't just ancestry, it's lineage. The threads passed down father to son, mother to child, 
generation after generation. And that's where things cracked. Utsi's paternal Y chromosome belonged to a rare branch of the G2A haplogroup, not the common line found across Alpine villages, but a splinter group, one already fading from Europe's record. Even more shocking was his maternal DNA, which means this, his mother's line ended with him. There are no descendants. No one alive today carries that signature. It's as if the moment he fell, a whole family tree collapsed into the snow with him. So while we had pictured him as the typical Copper Age farmer, one of many, the reality was the opposite. Utsi was an outlier, a man carrying the last echoes of lineages already disappearing. And that raised a question more haunting than the arrow in his back. Was he killed because he was different? Or did he simply die as the last of his kind? Genetics painted an intimate portrait, dark hair, brown eyes, skin that was neither pale nor deeply dark, but somewhere between, the complexion of Europe before the Bronze Age reshaping. He was lactose intolerant, like nearly everyone of his time. Milk would have poisoned him, cheese would have sickened him. The dairy adaptation that dominates Europe today didn't exist yet in his bloodline. His stomach told us his last meal was a feast of survival. Ibex and red deer meat, einkorn wheat, even bracken fern, hunted, cultivated, foraged. It wasn't just what he ate, it was where it came from. Each food pointed to different corners of the Alps, proof that he moved far, trading valleys, climbing passes, hunting beyond one territory. His tools told the same story. The copper in his axe traced back to Tuscany, hundreds of miles away. The obsidian flakes in his pouch likely came from islands in the Mediterranean. Amber beads hinted at networks stretching to the distant Baltic. Even in isolation, he was connected, proof that prehistoric Europe was a web of exchange reaching farther than anyone imagined. And yet the most important detail wasn't what he carried, it was what never carried forward. His line ended, his people vanished, and he was left alone in the ice, a relic of something already disappearing. To understand why, we have to look at the society around him. Alpine villages of the Copper Age were close-knit. Men stayed in their birth valleys, working the same land their fathers had. Women moved between villages, marrying in, bringing new blood, weaving alliances. It was a stable system, a closed circle. The DNA record confirms it. Men buried across the region all share the same Y chromosome line, generation after generation of continuity. Perhaps it was personal. The arrow that pierced his shoulder may have carried more than intent to kill. It may have carried rejection. But even if he had survived that ambush, time itself was closing in. A thousand years after his death, the Alps changed forever. Migrants thundered in from the east, Indo-Europeans riding with horses, bronze weapons, and new gods of war. They didn't just bring technology, they brought a genetic wave. Step DNA flooded into Europe, rewriting the genome of entire populations. The old farmer-hunter mixture collapsed under the tide. Within centuries, the Alpine people who had shaped Utsi's world were gone, their signatures diluted, erased, replaced. His unique maternal line never reappears. His rare paternal branch dwindles into nothing. It's as if his frozen body is more than a man. It's a gravestone for an entire people. And that's what makes Utsi terrifying. We don't just see how he died. We see extinction happen in real time. Not a species, but a bloodline. Not an empire, but a family. He wasn't Europe's everyman. He was Europe's exception, a reminder that history is full of lives that vanish without descendants, without continuity, without a voice. Had the ice not kept him, his people would be forgotten completely. But the glacier did keep him, and now he stares at us across 5,000 years, a frozen whisper from a vanished world. The centuries after Utsi's death brought storms of change. The quiet alpine valleys where his people had farmed and hunted for millennia were about to become crossroads of migration. The Indo-European expansion, 
born from the vast steppe lands of Ukraine and Russia, swept into Central Europe like a flood. They came with horses, with wheels and wagons, with bronze weapons sharper than anything Utsi's people had ever wielded. And they came with bloodlines that would overwrite the genetic map of the continent. Archaeologists find their fingerprints everywhere, burials filled with new grave goods, ceramics painted in steppe designs, and DNA that suddenly shifts. By 2400 BC, alpine skeletons show steppe ancestry as high as 30%. The balance that had defined Europe since the Neolithic, the fusion of early farmers and Ice Age hunters, was gone. A new genetic code dominated and Utsi's world dissolved into silence. His rare Y chromosome line fades from the record. His mother's lineage vanishes completely, not diluted, not absorbed, erased. It's as though the Copper Age people he represented were pushed aside by history itself, replaced by something new and relentless. When we look back through the archeological layers, we don't just see change, we see disappearance. But Utsi's death is not explained by distant migrations. The arrow that pierced him came from close range, from someone he knew, someone who aimed at his back. Why? Was it envy? A fight over resources? Or was it deeper? Was his difference a mark that set him apart even in life? In a society built on kinship, where men shared bloodlines and women tied villages together, Utsi's DNA told a different story. He was outside the circle. No paternal link to the men around him. No maternal line connected to their mothers. Perhaps he was tolerated, but never trusted. Perhaps he was a stranger in his own valley. And when violence struck, there was no one to avenge him. He died not just alone, but unclaimed. The tragedy is that his isolation mirrors his people's fate. An entire lineage dying out, leaving behind only a single body to remind us it ever existed. And it raises a chilling truth. Extinction isn't always dramatic. Sometimes it happens quietly. One death, one missing branch, and the line is gone forever. Every detail about Utsi becomes heavier under this light. The tattoos marking his body, once thought ritual or decorative, take on new meaning. Lines of pain management carved into his skin, as if he had no healer to treat him. A man forced to stitch his own survival. The careful patchwork of his clothes, worn and reworn, stitched until the fibers frayed, suggests a man with no extended household to supply him, someone who repaired what he had because he couldn't depend on others. Even the medicine in his pouch, the birch fungus known to kill parasites, feels like the toolkit of a man who had only himself to rely on, an exile's pharmacy. That paradox, connected but not belonging, may be what defined his life and what doomed his end. What makes Utsi so haunting is that he is both ordinary and extraordinary. On the surface, he ate, dressed, and worked like other Copper Age farmers. But in the blood, in the lines of inheritance that shape who survives and who disappears, he was something else entirely. A ghost of a vanishing people, caught in the very act of erasure. When you look at him in the museum, you're not seeing Europe's everyman. You're seeing Europe's exception, a singular man who should not have survived in record at all, but did because the ice refused to let him go. And so, 5,000 years later, we can still ask, who was he? A traveler from a distant valley? An exile carrying the blood of people already forgotten? A relic of a lineage extinguished before the Bronze Age dawned? No answer silences the mystery. Because Utsi is not just evidence, he is absence. The absence of descendants, the absence of continuity, the absence of a people who are gone, except for him. Every year, new DNA studies reshape what we know. Every season, more alpine skeletons are sequenced. But no matter how wide the sample, no one has ever found Utsi's mother's line again. Not in the Alps, not in Europe, not anywhere on Earth. Which means this, his people are extinct. All we have left is the frozen man who walked those passes one last time. The silence around him is deafening. It isn't the silence of ice. It's the silence of disappearance. 
a reminder that humanity is filled with branches that never made it to the present, branches that broke before they could bloom. Utsi is not a fossil. He's not a symbol. He's a person whose death ended more than a life. It ended a bloodline, and that is what makes him terrifying. We are looking at someone who truly has no living relatives, no echo in the modern genome, no future beyond the ice. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and join us for the next video where we uncover more untold stories from humanity's past. Each episode takes us deeper into the mysteries of history.